uh, the fur industry or any other type of fashion industry. The picture here on the left is a picture of a fox, and it's a very common method for acquiring the pelt of an animal so you don't destroy, rip, or tear the pelt. They will use anal electrocution with a rod in the front and in the back. That way they don't destroy the fur. And on the right is a picture of a squirrel. It's a common issue is called bycatch. When you're trying to catch wild animals from the forest, obviously you catch more than your target animal. Now animals in re animals in and excuse me, animals in entertainment. Um, the picture on the left, left is undercover footage of an elephant being beaten by its trainer. Now, if you think about what circuses do, they have animals behave in ways that are not natural. Lions and elephants and bears don't jump through hoops of fire. They don't behave the way that they do in circuses in the wild for a reason. It's not natural. The only way you can have a huge or very volatile animal behave in the way that you want them to is to withhold food and incorporate fear or beat them into submission. And the picture on the right is of lions, again, in captivity in zoos. The only way these animals, the reason these animals are in zoos is for conservation reasons or presumably to protect them from poaching or for, from dying. In fact, taking these animals from the wild and breeding them in captivity only perpetuates more captive animals. It's not working to protect their species in the long term. Again, there's so much information on both of these issues. I've prov provided websites. I encourage you to follow them and learn more on your own. Now, animals further in um, lucrative industries, if you will, the picture on the left is a rescued female from a puppy mill. Puppy mills are factories where they keep breeding males and females in cages their entire lives to continually reproduce and reproduce and provide puppies. Now, when I was a small girl, we would go to the pet store, and it was well known back then that what you're looking at are disposable puppies and kittens. When you bring them home, many times they're so ill from having ill parents or being genetically inbred that they die or they're sick their entire lives. Now, the two dogs on the right, obviously, you're pretty well aware of dog fighting with Michael Vick and all the issues associated with that. I was pretty disturbed to learn that one, of, one common way to make your dog a stronger fighter, obviously they're raised in really horrid conditions and abused to make them stronger, but they pump them full of arsenic to make their blood taste less palatable to the attacking dog. Again, there are links on the bottom of the screen to learn more. Now the next slide. This I felt really grasped the bigger picture of disconnect, which do you pet and which do you eat? But why? The cat or the pig. Pigs are very intelligent, just like dogs, just like three-year-old humans, in fact. But somewhere along the lines of our culture, we've decided that dogs and cats are worthy. Pigs, cows, chickens, and ducks are not. So what I hope to do, again, with this image is reconnect you and get you to think outside of the box. Again, Many groups, many groups that focus on speaking on behalf of the animals will focus on this issue, not because they care more about cows and ducks and pigs and chickens, but because of the sheer numbers. There are 10 billion land animals just in the United States slaughtered every year for food, and they're kept in factory farms or also known as CAFOs, which are concentrated animal feeding operations. In terms of numbers, there are more than they are more than those killed in labs, those killed by hunters, and those killed in pounds. In fact, it said that up to one American meat eater can consume somewhere along the lines of 22 warm-blooded animals per year. This is not including our fish friends in the oceans and exploitation to their numbers and to their habitats. 22 warm-blooded animals. In fact, I believe that's a low-ball number. So a lot. A large amount of emphasis is placed on animals raised for food because of the amount of individuals that are abused in this industry. Now, to educate you on the bigger picture, there are there's a video I would like to show you. It's approximately 12 minutes long. It, it's undercover footage. These are real-time hidden cameras placed within slaughterhouses and factory farms. This is not an isolated incident. These are not isolated issues. These are not pre-recorded or rehearsed. As we speak, there are investigators in facilities recording 
behind-the-scenes treatment of animals and factory farms. Okay, so as you can imagine, these animals being raised in these conditions and being treated in such a way has ramifications that extend far beyond their immediate abuse. It's breeding negativity, it's breeding violence in our world, but also it has a ripple effect on our environment. Now these two images on the screen represent two separate industries. The key, the car key indicates the entire transportation sector, which includes boats, planes, trains, automobiles, trucks, buses, the entire transportation sector. The fork indicates the food industry, which of these two industries is doing more to drive our climate crisis, is contributing more to global warming. Bingo, the food industry. The United Nations 2006 report has indicated via the Food and Agricultural Organization that the entire animal industry sector is contributing more to our climate crisis than all of transportation. In fact, the World Watch Institute's recent numbers analyzing the exact same data as the United Nations suggests that, in fact, not only is animal agriculture more than transportation, but over half of all of our climate greenhouse gas emissions are directly responsible from our animal agriculture industry. Now, as a quote, livestock is a major threat to our environment. Remedies are urgently needed, end quote, from the United Nations. Now, this is a picture of a feedlot. Animals, cattle raised for food are given approximately 120 days of grazing time. And this is a picture of a rather large feedlot. Now, you wonder, how exactly could animal agriculture be that destructive? Well, according, again, to the United Nations, website, which their website is up here, www.fao.org. Just to give you a quick breakdown in terms of greenhouse gases, now only 9% of the annual human-induced carbon dioxide is resulting from animal agriculture, but methane, which is a more heat-trapping gas, it's far more volatile than carbon dioxide. 37% of all of our methane is coming from animal agriculture and, of course, nitrous oxide. That's another significant chunk of greenhouse gas, 65%. Deforestation, 2.4 billion tons of carbon dioxide released just because of deforestation. 70% of the former Amazon rainforest has been cleared for pasture land for grazing livestock. In terms of biodiversity, 15 out of 24 ecosystem services are in sharp decline. The New York Times back in 2008 had a great chart to break down the amount of greenhouse gases and the amount of vehicles used and the amount of driving time. Basically, they showed that if all Americans would eliminate animal products from three meals per week, it would have a greater impact than every single U.S. vehicle being a hybrid. You can do a Google search for the New York Times May 18, 2008 issue, and it will show this chart. 